Hey y'all, Coach and Fire here, guys. Stay swim. Hey y'all. And in today's class, we're going to be talking about exercising some demons out of our family. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. That's what you're here for. You're here to say something. We gotta <laughs> say something. Yeah. Right. We're coming out of the Testament of Solomon, and it's not only our family, but um, it's everybody's family, and I believe that's, you know, the purpose of us doing this class is so that everybody can get some information out of what we're about to learn here. So what we're going to be doing is looking at the root cause of the problems that are affecting many families and marriages, including ours. Yeah, these seven spirits the Messiah told us about um, when he was dealing with Mary Magdalene. And what we're going to do in this class is we're going to identify these seven spirits in the Testament of Solomon. We'll cover each of the seven spirits and how they affect our families individually. So what we want to do in this video, like Stacy said, is we want to get down to the root cause of the problem, not really the solution, but the root cause of the problem. Right. Yeah, I hope that in this class that I can, um, I guess, be transparent and somewhat vulnerable so that, you know, not only that it will help our family, but it will help the families of those who are viewing this uh, video. But um, that's only a hope. <laughs> I hope I can. Well, we'll see. And as an added level of difficulty, we're going to be going through the scripture backwards. Okay. We're going to start at the end of um, what King Solomon had to say about these seven spirits. We're going to start with the seventh one, and then we're going to work our way back to the first one. Okay. Okay. So the Positive Mental Attitude book say start with the end in mind. Well, it's kind of almost like that but a little bit different because the end here is treacherous very bad something that nobody really wants to be involved in like you see there in verse 41 you want to go ahead and read that likewise also the seventh said I am the worst and I make thee worse off than thou was because I will impose the bonds of Arthemis but the locust will set me free, for by means thereof is it fated that thou shalt achieve my desire. For if one were wise, he would not turn his steps toward me. So this is the seventh one, and it's very coded, basically saying um, this is the worst of them all. And if one were wise, one were wise, he would never uh, even look in that direction, right? Mm -hmm. But if you really want to find out what direction that is, you can read the end of the book and see the downfall of Solomon. Right. All right. So, like I said, we're going backwards. So, let's look up in verse 40. Likewise, also the six said, I am error, O King Solomon, and I will make thee to err, as I have before made thee to err, when I caused thee to slay thy own brother. I will lead you into error so as to pry into graves and I teach them that dig and I lead errant souls away from all piety and many other evil traits are mine but I have an angel that frustrates me Uriel so here you have a lot of uh, witchcraft a lot of voodoo a lot of stuff like you said to lead the spirit away from all piety this would include stuff like drinking blood um, eating food that contain blood, um, basically um, using the scripture in the opposite way. When it says don't do a thing, that will be the thing that these people are doing. Mm -hmm. So this is number six. Right. Right. So the last result, you don't want to go there. And then number six is pretty much um, a bad place that nobody... I was just going to say that it mentioned that um, many of the evil traits that we had that we have are because of the spirit of error. Yeah, so it's causing us to err in many, 
many different ways, right? But it's leading the souls away. That's big. You know, it ain't just making you know mathematical error. These are actually leading people to their death, to their destruction, you know, preventing them from seeing the kingdom of heaven. Is what this is really all about. Um, basically, stealing their blessings from them here on level six. Okay, so let's look back at level five because the point of this, like we said, is to never get there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, of course we don't want to see number seven. Number six would be basically falling off the cliff. Right. And then so let's see what five is so we don't get that far. Likewise, also the fifth said, I am power. By power I raise up tyrants and tear down kings. To all rebels, I furnish power. I have an angel that frustrates me. As to Ra. Now, this power is given after the fact. Of course, this is the fifth devil, mm -hmm. fifth demon. So you've already gone through four already. Right. So this, this power is coming after these four have already done their deeds, have already, you know, so we really haven't gotten to the root cause of what the problem is, right? Mm -hmm. But this power is strange because we learn about it also in the Shepherd of Hermes, mm -hmm. that having power is necessary. Yeah. So, but what it's talking about here is power used in a wrong way. Yeah, it says that in order, well, it says that to all rebels, I furnish power. So at this stage, the fifth stage, you are already considered disobedient. Yeah, a rebel. Yeah, breaking the rules, breaking the laws. And to these people who prefer breaking the laws, he says to all of them, he gives power. Right. And this power could come in the form of money. It could come in the form of a position. It could come in the form of popularity. It could come in the form of a church. Come in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. You know, even a, even a large family where this this person is allowed to rule over the family or rule over the business or rule over the, the club or whatever that they're given power right but notice that it's the rebel that's given the power all the rebels are given the power all right moving along on backwards let's look at verse 38 likewise also the fourth said i cause men to forget their sobriety and moderation I part them and split them into parties, for strife follows me hand in hand. I rend the husband from the share of his bed, and children from parents, and brothers from sisters. But why tell so much to my despite? I have an angel that frustrates me, the great Balthiel. All right, so we're here on level four. This is the fourth beast. He doesn't tell that her name is jealousy we find out that up in the uh, previous verses up there uh, verse 34 when he first starts talking about these but like we said we're going backwards and so the first thing that we see there is separation from the brothers from the sisters the sisters and the brothers are separated and it says the children from the parents the children are separated from the parents it, well if you go back up there it says, I, oh, let me highlight it for you. It says, I rend the husband from the sharer of his bed and the children from the parents and the brothers from the sisters. So that's the next to last thing that happens is that the family is broken up. Yeah, they're, they're split apart. I remember when... Um, my grandma used to, well, when she used to make sheets or blankets, she would say to rend the sheets, that means to tear them into pieces, split them apart. So just as it says, it tears apart the husband, I guess from his wife, when it speaks about from the share of his bed, the children from their parents and the brothers from their sisters. Yeah, so it's basically breaking up the household. Right. Then, if you look at what goes on before that, you have strife in the family. So there's arguing. So there's arguing, and then after the argument, there's the separation of the family, where the 
wife is separated from the bed, followed by the children and so all of that. And then if you look back, before that, the family is broken up into parties. And this, you may remember the Messiah said that uh, when these end times come, the family will be broken up or you would have three against two and right. four against five and then that. Well, that's what this is, where the family is broken up into parties. And then, so if you look at the chronology of that, they break up into the, to the parties first, then they start to argue, then they split up. Yeah, it says strife follows me um, after, I guess, the losing of sobriety and moderation and the splitting of the parties. Yeah, we haven't gotten to that part yet. But after they split up, then you go into five, which is power. Right. Where the rebel is given power. Right. Um, and then after that, there's error, mm -hmm. where this power I guess used is used to um for their fall, for their downfall. Right. Or, um <clears throat> right. But now back up here, so before all of this party separation and all of this, you have the loss of moderation where the man is made to forget moderation and he says I just like down here he says I will rend. So this is this demon that is rending the family and causing the wife and the children to separate. This is also causing the man to forget his moderation. Yes. Now, this moderation is to all, in my observation, is tied to dopamine and it could be related to anything. It's just what they would call the drug of choice, which could be weird stuff like running or eating, but. Or the. Um you could hear it a lot in people who are worker, workaholics. They never come home. Yeah. They never want to be bothered. I guess not necessarily bothered, but they never spend time with their families. Well, and you know, that's the thing about moderation is it's okay to be a workaholic as long as there is moderation. But once he goes over and loses the moderation, then like I said, the family is then going to be destroyed for anything. Like I said, even if it's running, Mm -hmm. The person is just going to run their self to death, right? But most of the time, this materializes in the form of drugs and alcohol. Mm -hmm. And we see, you know, um, the man will result, we're going to learn here, to uh, the drugs and the alcohol or food or women, anything that creates dopamine that could do uh, anything, mm -hmm. you know, uh, he's going to rely on it uh, but before that there's the loss of or the forgetting of the sobriety now we want to think they're related and tied and say all oh, this is saying about drugs and I know it's not this is completely different all of your drugs and alcohol and women and gambling and sport all your all that dopamine stuff is in here what this is talking about is modesty Right. When the Bible talks about sobriety and having a sober mind, it's telling us to be modest and to be humble. Right. So what this is, is the loss of humility. The loss. Hmm? So he takes on, are you saying that person takes on pride or something? Takes on pride, takes on arrogance, loses his humility. I, I can come in many forms. But you can imagine here you have this man. After he, after you reach the fourth stage of these things, and you'll understand why when we see the other stages, is now basically becoming a lion in his household. Right. So he he becomes a lion in his household, and then and then you have the loss of the moderation, right? So well, this is the fourth beast, the fourth demon. Mm -hmm. So let's go on back to the third, because like we said, we're trying to get to the root cause of these. Okay. Yeah, they're one following another, following another. All right, so let's look at number three. Likewise, also, the third said, I am called cloth old, which is battle. And I cause the well behaved to scatter and fall foul one to the other. And why do I say so much? I have an angel that frustrates me. Marmara. All right, so now here, what's happening before the man is affected by number four, because 
it appears first number four as soon as it starts talking about the man and then one could say based since it starts talking about the man did this and he caused the man to do that then it could be the man is causing the uh wife to leave the bed and the man is causing the children to be scattered and the man is doing all of this so this is uh, having an effect on a man here number four but then you look at number three you see battle you see that what is it says the well behaved to scatter and fall foul when of another in other words she's causing people to fight right people who would normally fight are now at battle they're at war mm -hmm. right and so if you're looking at the chronology of this you have this battle and if this battle doesn't work you have this uh loss of sobriety and this loss of moderation and then this loss of the whole family destruction and if that doesn't work the rebel will receive power so that the further destruction can take place. And I believe it's all necessary. We'll, we'll, we'll keep going. We'll see here. Okay, so what's next? Number 36 mm -hmm. says, Likewise also the second said, I am strife, strife of strifes. I bring timbers, stones, hangers, my weapons on the spot. But I have an angel who frustrates me, Orachiel. All right, so now here you have strife, which says proudly that she is strife of strifes, meaning argument of argument. The biggest argument, this is like big argument time. Mm -hmm. And she, um, like you said, brings timbers and stones. This reminds you of sticks and stones that break my bones. Mm -hmm. So this is right. basically just fussing and fussing. But watch what happens when the fussing doesn't work. Then comes the battle, which would include also stuff like, you know, slamming doors and and knocking over stuff and banging on pole pits and all of that stuff will be a battle. But it comes after the strife has its chance. So what does it mean by strife? What would you say strife meant? Anger or bitter disagreement over fundamental issues and it's key that it says fundamental issues here that's going to come up later when we start talking about heresies and the sources fundamental issues we ain't talking about you know whether you got too much peanut butter on the sandwich or not right yeah this is core stuff here and this demon the second one says that again she's strife of strife big time all right so then let's go on to the first one yeah, and before we go, you said that it was she, and I just want to qualify that you said you're saying she because earlier in the book it does name these demons as women figure like types. Wow, back in 34, and we'll, we'll read over it, we'll read through that as a yeah. summary. You're right, so but let's go, let's hit 35 first. The first said, I am deception, I deceive and weave snares here and there, I welcome and excite heresies, but I have an angel who frustrates me, Lamachio. So here's the first demon, and we didn't read all of the verse there, but there's the first demon, it's deception. Right. Now, notice her responsibility is to deceive and weave snares here and there. She says she wets and excites heresies. And that's an important word, especially when we was talking about earlier, fundamental issues that are in question here not everyday arguments you know whether you should have a pink car or whether you should have a purple one mm -hmm. this is heresy fundamental scriptural debates and arguments introducing deception so what we're learning here is that it starts first with this deception then it goes through the strife which is the argument and i believe the argument is to to stop the deception Basically, someone has told a lie, mm -hmm. and now we're going to argue about this lie. Mm -hmm. And if we can't argue and get the lie dissolved, then there comes battle. Right. You know, we're going to start stomping around and making some noise, you know. And if that don't work, well, then we're going to start laying some ground rules, you know, in the yeah. lack of our sobriety. And I mean, in the lack of our sobriety, we're going to start laying ground rules and saying how you need to do this and you need to do this. And I said, we're going to put away these lies. 
and then if that don't work then you know you go on to the, the uh, drinking and smoking or whatever and then, or you know the running or the eating or whatever you don't do and then if that don't work if as kind of a coping agent a way of dealing with all of this if that don't work then the family is separated and okay. the people are put out of the house but that's not the end right it's two more it's two more that you know or you know power error there's three more power error and this fourth one uh down here and let's look up here to see what her name is it really doesn't even tell you her name down there in that but let's go ahead and re read verse 34 and I glorified God afresh who gave me this authority and ordered another demon to come before me and there came seven spirits females bound and woven together fair in appearance and comely and I Solomon seeing them questioned them and said who are you but they with one accord said with one voice we are of the 33rd elements of the cosmic ruler of the darkness and the first said I am deception the second said I am strife the third I am clothod which is battle the fourth I am jealousy the fifth I am power the sixth I am error the seventh I am the worst of all, and our stars are in heaven. Seven stars humble in sheen and all together. And we are called, as it were, goddesses. We change our place all and together, and together we live sometimes in Lydia, sometimes in Olympus, and sometimes in a great mountain. Okay, so this is a, a great summary of learning all of these demons learning how they are feminine learning how they are very attractive we're learning how they are bound and woven together meaning that when you see one you're going to see them all so when you see deception whatever form it may come in you know that you're dealing with uh the seven spirits and it's just my observation that like you said once deception comes in strife is there to squash it but if that doesn't work you have to move on through the cycle until this heresy is destroyed or else the family is destroyed and even maybe some people is destroyed you know in this process right but notice down there where it says you know sometimes he resides or they resides these feminine spirits resides in Lydia sometimes in Olympus and sometimes in a great mountain mm -hmm. we talked about the Olympus and we talked about Lydia uh, before you can look those up and see the significance of those but this great mountain I've gotten a revelation today in an earlier class how this is related to what we read about in the Shepherd of Hermas okay and how you have the first two mountains the black mountain and the not so black mountain I can't remember those but they were into deception and heresies and lies right. okay. so so those are black mountain mm -hmm. people Right, so sort of like when a person is um, considered on the Black Mountain, they can be expected to have the seven um, spirits that follow them. Well, absolutely. If they are in deception, because they are bound and woven together, anybody, Black Mountain or not, even if you're just, you know, visiting, you know, you, any deception is going to bring this. Any argument is going to bring this. It's just a matter of how far you're going to take it or what path are you going to take. Sometimes we like the lie and sometimes we prefer the lie. So, you know, if you um, come and, you know, say I look good or and, or you say, um, I don't know, this dress fits nice or whatever, you and I both may know that that's not true, but we are going to both decide to run with it and we're going to act like it's the truth and so you won't see strife there will be no argument mm -hmm. you know there will be no battle you know because you know there's it's not heresy and it's not going to bring um, an argument or um, 
fighting or anything like that. Yeah, from what I understand here, you know, putting a lot of emphasis on the fact that deception who is the first, and first mean first, um, says that you know she wets and excites heresies. That's her job. That's what she does. Yeah, I agree. I also believe that, you know, like when she says, I deceive and weave snares here and there, that, you know, it also could be talking about worldly things, just going by some of the examples that we have, you know, as a family. So now that you say that, I believe you're absolutely right. I mean, it does say that she wets heresies in that sentence, but in the previous sentence, it says she deceives and weaves snares here and there. So these heresies would be simply a subset of all of these snares that she weaves. Yeah, being an everyday part of our lives. But what we've learned in this class is that she is the root cause. At least that's what it seems to me. That she's the one that's going to at least usher in the rest of these spirits or these demons. Yeah. Um, she's the, I guess you would call like the head leader or she um once deception is initiated all the other will follow behind her kind of like a wedge or a pick or something that can easily get inside of a family or an organization or any type of group making way for the rest of these spirits to enter and do you think that um just because sometimes you know not knowing that deception is present that that doesn't, um, I guess, thwart the power that she has, even though you don't know that you've done deception, that doesn't minimize her power because deception is deception, knowing or unknowing. You're right. So the only way you would know is by these other spirits like strife followed by battle. Right. So when you see these order when you see this order you know especially when you start getting down into jealousy when you start seeing the lack of sobriety and the lack of moderation and the separation of the family and you say well hold up you yeah. know what's we're going working, on here yeah we're starting to work with spiritual things now yeah once you once you can see claw thought and once you can see strife then yeah you understand that your family or your your organization is being affected by these particular powers to the the seven spirits but it does sound like if you can somehow minimize or eliminate the deception you could possibly do away with all of these spirits maybe yeah i agree simply because they follow behind deception yeah. um if you like you said minimize or do away with with them her being the head leader you gotta have a head you know and then the followers come behind the head so yeah and, and she does and, and and you know and, and she does say that she is the first you know so one could try to make the argument and say well strife could enter first or maybe the lack of moderation could enter first and then you know we can work our way back to some deception you know to, to to but no she says she is first so there's the order of things so if you can somehow stop her stop deception or once you notice there is deception get rid of deception maybe you can get rid of all of them maybe that's the key but if not you know we'll have to talk about these other frustrations in a future video mm -hmm. like um um, this Lamachalel and Barachiachel. We'll have to talk about all of these, who they are, what they are, and how we could use this information. Um, like for instance, this angel here is the angel Baruch. And simply by reading, I believe his second Baruch will help us to deal with strife. Okay. But we'll learn all of that in a future video. So you guys, uh, make sure you subscribed. Make sure you hit that like button if you haven't done so already. And leave us a comment. Right. Shalawama. Shalawama.